Hello there, Tommy from The Run Testers. In this video, we are going to be talking about 10K races. So some of The Run Testers are gonna be talking through the 10K races in the UK that they have really enjoyed and think you might want to look at. Now, it's probably worth mentioning here that when it comes to 10K races, most runners tend to do them a bit closer to the home. So most of The Run Testers live in the South and the Midlands of the UK. So we haven't got as many in the North as we have in the south. So if you do know of any great 10K races that appear in the Midlands or above, then please let us know in the comments and we might check them out. Um, but just to warn you, a lot of these will be in the Midlands and the south of England. Okay, let's jump in and see what we all picked. So my first pick for 10K races in the UK is the Lincoln 10K. Now this is a race that is close to home. It's where I come from. So it has a special place in my heart and it's a race that I actually really enjoy. It's um, one of the biggest races that you can do in Lincolnshire and the Midlands for that, for that fact. And it gets a lot of people that come along to do the race. Lincoln is a city that has a lot of history. And luckily, the race itself takes part in the top part of Lincoln, where you find the cathedral, where you find uh, Lincoln Castle and loads of really cool old shops and buildings and things. So it's a nice place to do it and it actually finishes going through into the cathedral. So it's a really nice race to do if you want to check out Lincoln and find out what it's like and see a little bit of history as well. The race is really good as well if you're looking for a fast time. Uh, Lincoln is actually on a big hill, but all of the race takes place at the top of the hill. So there's no hills within the race that you have to, to do uh, as part of the 10K. So if you're looking to get a fast time, it's a pretty fast course. And I've done some of my fastest times during this race. The race is a sort of figure of eight around the top of Lincoln. So it's really good if you have people coming along that want to watch you run because you can generally find a place to set up camp and you'll probably run, run past two or three times so it's a really good place if you want to see uh, a runner taking part um, without having to move a great deal and also because it's that sort of figure of eight race wherever you go it's quite easy to get back to the finish line to meet them at the end so really good spectator event as well and also because it's that figure of eight you generally have a nice bit of scenery around where you're going so you can see the castle for quite a lot of the race you can see the cathedral and it's the cathedral is a great place to finish because it's loads of bars out there uh, and it's just really nice, vibrant, excited thing. There aren't many races that take place in Lincoln, so it's kind of a big deal. A lot of cities that are a bit bigger tend to have a lot more races, but this is the, the main race, I think, that happens in, um, in Lincoln City, so it's well worth looking at if you're around the area, or you fancy a bit of a trip up to see Lincoln, because uh, it's one of the areas of the country that I find that a lot of people haven't been to, so it's a nice opportunity to get there and do a race and actually see what it's like. The race takes place in April, so it can be a little bit risky. The um, Lincolnshire around that time of year can be quite warm. It can be really wet. I've done it sometimes where it's fantastic weather, perfect conditions for running. I did it a couple of years ago and it was probably the wettest I've ever done a race and everyone was drenched by the end. So keep that in mind if you're thinking of doing it. The weather is a little bit changeable around that part of the country. <music> So most of my races tend to be a little bit longer than 10k but I have done a few over the years and aside from the London ones like the Vitality 10k, the uh, British Athletics 10k in London which are some of my early ones, there's a few that I would really recommend highly. Now two of those are down in the New Forest. Now the first is part of the UK Trail Running Festival, an event that was kind of born out of the Covid pandemic when the New Forest Marathon was forced at the last minute to move locations. It switched from where it is just outside Brockenhurst in the New Forest in the south of England in Hampshire over to St Giles Estate in Wimborne, also in the forest but a little bit further across and they moved all of their races over there including the 10k. When I was down there in 2020 I ran the marathon on the Saturday and I did the 10k on the Sunday morning. Now this 10K is a fantastic, I mean, it's a fantastically organized event. You've got a beautiful race village with music and beers and food. And you know, there's, there's a, a really calm, easy, no fuss start and finish, which makes the event a, a wonderful, a wonderful thing to be a part of. The run itself takes on some sort of slightly lumpy ups and downs of New Forest trails. You get a mixed uh, bag of terrain from kind of a little bit of compacted gravel you get some proper trails get a bit of grass you get a bit of tarmac there's actually a little bit of everything in there there's a little bit of elevation a little bit of down it's not too lumpy and all of those downs definitely make up for the slogs on the up bits 
it's not going to be a personal best kind of chasing environment this but it is a really really fun race to do and it's a wonderful wonderful green antidote to the usual kind of gray urban 10k runs so over the course of the weekend you've got a 5k a 10k a half and a full trail marathon in this location they all start and finish in the same place so it's kind of a great place if you've got runners who want to do different distances and come as a group or you've got family who want to stay at the end in the race village or you want to test yourself over a few different distances it's a really nice one to come and do and i would totally recommend it for that this year it will take place around the 30th of april so you also get to see the new forest in the springtime which is amazing and the entry to the 10k will cost you 26 pounds first off is the london winter run 10k this takes place every february it's a good one to get in your diary um, so that when after christmas after new year you've got something there to encourage you out um, it's also really fun. You know you're going to have a, a great day. It's uh, got loads of atmosphere there. And I think it's a good one for spectators to come along to, especially if you've got young kids, because there's all the um, people dressed up as huskies that are there cheering you on and penguins and polar bears. Um, so that's really nice for them. Um, it's nice for you when you're running along and uh, seeing the huskies dancing along to Who Let the Dogs Out is something that I'll always remember of that race it is a great race for the route goes round central london you start in trafalgar square um and then finish on whitehall the there is potential to run fast there if you are a speedy runner um it's got wave starts and they've always they've always had that it's something that I, a lot of races have brought in since covid but um they've always had that which has been great everyone the chance to run at the pace that's right for them so starts at Trafalgar Square, you go off, you see a few sights, see a few huskies and you'll get a polar bear hug at the finish and if you like medals they do very good um, medals each year so they're a really nice thing to collect. So it's £47.50 um, for the standard entry, they do have like early bird ones you, that's a lot, yeah, for a 10k, but you know that a sizable amount of that is going to Cancer Research UK. There's a heavily fundraising element to the race, um, but it's always really well organised and well supported, and it's one of my favourites. So I've done a lot of 10k races. I couldn't tell you how many, but I have definitely done a fair few. Most have been in London. Now, I don't know if it's because I'm a Londoner and you know I'm kind of spoiled in terms of being able to run these routes generally anyway. None have been massively memorable for me. So I've had to kind of look outside of London to think about ones that I actually really stood out for me. And I think one particularly that I think of uh, that I've done recently is the Riverness 10K. Now that is the race that I did with Tom um, last year. And that race is part of the kind of um, Loch Ness Marathon weekend. Um, so you've got the 5K, uh, a 10K and the marathon. And the 10K is on the same day as the marathon. Now, the reason I think it's a really nice one to do, I think Inverness is lovely as well. It's good to be there for the weekend and the marathon weekend overall. But it is quick. It's flat as well. I wasn't expecting it to be as flat and quick as it was. And if I, I guess if I didn't have a, a marathon or, my, you know, me and Tom didn't have a marathon to kind of track, you know, race, the following weekends i think i probably had a nice good go at it um but it was as i said it's a nice flat race gets you it's almost the last part of the um the marathon course so you kind of get that kind of finish that nice finish uh, back into inverness by the river and it's yeah it's as i say you can have a good go at it if you were there for the weekend you and someone else is doing the marathon but you didn't fancy going the full distance and you wanted a, a nice race to kind of test yourself and you know try and run relatively quick uh, at then that would be a good race to do as i said it was a bit of a surprise for me i wasn't expecting to go up and do that one but in terms of doing it in terms of you know, even the support for the 10k even though the marathon was going it was very very good still it's a nice finish when you come into back into inverness by the river and i think uh yeah if you're you're up in scotland you're up uh, looking for a kind of nippy 10k to do then that would be one that i would say it's kind of stood out for me The next race I have picked is close to my current home, and that is the Hove Prom 10K. Now, if you don't live in Brighton, um, you probably know 
you've heard of the Brighton Marathon, the Brighton Half Marathon, and the, the 10K that comes as part of the marathon. Um, but there are so many races that take place on the South Coast. There's a lot of runners down here. There's quite a few running clubs, and it's pretty serious business down on the South Coast um, with quite competitive level runners taking part in a lot of the races. The races that take place on the seafront, so the promenade, uh, are fairly open to the weather. So sometimes you can have the best conditions ever. It's completely flat and you can have an amazing race for a PB. If the conditions are not good, you really notice it on, on the on the front. So, uh, and people who've ran the marathon a few times will know the difference that the weather can make when you're running uh, down in Brighton. But because there's a lot of races down on the front, a lot of them are quite, quite similar. So um, I've picked the Hove Prompt MK because it's probably the one that I think is probably the, the best value for money um, and the most convenient for me. It takes place in October and it's just a very simple, nice race. So you just go along the promenade, come back, very simple. You don't have to worry too much about directions or anything like that. You've also got a great view as well. You run towards the pier and you get to see all of the seafront stuff as you're running along. And it's just a really nice race to go and join in on that isn't too expensive. The race is organized by Nice Work who do some great races, do loads of races around the UK, um, and they're really good when it comes to managing the race, getting all the chip timing done, everything like that. So it's a well-organized race and definitely one to look at if you're thinking of coming down to the South Coast and you want a, a race that's probably a little smaller than what you would get from something like the Brighton 10K, the Brighton Half Marathon. It's a, it's a low-key affair. You still get a few hundred people doing it, but it's a little bit more accessible and there's a, a lot of space. If you're a fast runner and you're looking at getting a fast time and you're, 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 you want to gamble with the weather, um, then it's well worth looking at because it is a really fast race on a, on a good day. But on a bad day, um, yeah, you're not going to get a PB on this race. <laughs> So number two is the New Forest Marathon 10K, which was the original race, but it's in a different location. This one starts and finishes on a show site in and around Brockenhurst, which is banging the heart of the New Forest. Again, you've got a kind of very central start and finish area, start and finish race village, where you can camp there. Uh, there's a whole area with kind of food trucks and coffee, and a, there's a beer bus, and there's music and entertainments for the start and the finish. It's very, very relaxed when you arrive. You know, you, it's no fuss, no stress in the morning of the race. Bag drops really super easy in and around any of these races. And, you know, the marathon's brilliant. I've recommended that in our, our marathon races video that you'll find on the channel here as well. But the 10K, obviously a little shorter version, a bite-sized version of that is brilliant for any beginner runners who might be doing their first kind of off-roading or even just getting into running for the first, you know, in their early sort of stage of their running sort of uh, journey, this is a great place to go to get a taste of what it's like to run off-road. Again, what you're going to be running through, some of the most beautiful parts of the New Forest, you're going to experience kind of gravel trail, some ups and downs, bits of road, uh, but essentially your kind of tree-lined uh, route, which is absolutely wonderful, epic. It's like a real kind of green feast for the eyes, very, very good for the soul. And again, I would highly recommend it. Now the same thing happens here on this one where you'll get a 5k, a 10k, a half marathon and a marathon. They all happen on the same day, they're on the same morning, set off at different times. And that means it's great again if you want to have runners coming in with different distances. There's also a junior run, so it's brilliant for the family. If you've got kids, you want to bring them along, give them a chance to run as well. Now one of my favourite bits about this is there's a really good chance to see loads and loads of the wildlife down in the New Forest. At times you can, if you're lucky, be running and see ponies galloping alongside you and it's just such a wonderful, wonderful thing to be a part of. So the, the races take place in September each year and this year it's going to be on Sunday the 10th of September. An entry to the 10k will cost you £32. <laughs> So next up is the Pride 10K London. It's held in Victoria Park every year and it's organised by the London Front Runners, which are an LGBTQ plus running club. Um, so the Pride 10K is, is kind of three laps, just under three laps and nice wide flat paths. If you know Victoria Park, you know there's a lot of races on there. This is the best one though. Um, so it's... Really, there's a lot of fast running going on there because there's a lot of fast runners in that club and a lot of fast runners from um, surrounding clubs that come and take it on because they know that there's potential to run fast there. But there's also people in fancy dress, people um, there for a good time or to raise money. The 
important thing that sets this apart is that it's on a Saturday morning and it's generally, it's not too early. The details aren't up for this year, so I can't tell you precisely, but it's usually about 10.30 start, something like that. So it's a good one if you're traveling into London for it because you don't have to get, you know, you'll be able to get public transport in hopefully. And um, it's, it happens on Saturday. So you can have Sunday to recover because there's a party afterwards at the People's Park Tavern. Everyone's encouraged to go there and um, have a bit of a celebration. So there you go. Put it in your diary for when the date comes out. You can find them on Twitter. They, they're usually pretty good at spreading the word there. The final race that I picked is the St. Albans 10K. Now I did this race during, just after the first lockdown and I was training quite a lot during the lockdown and this is where I've got my PB and I can't beat my PB that I got from this race. It was 38.18 and I've I've got a 38.18 in Brighton on the seafront um, but I've never got past it. So it holds a special place for me, this race uh, and annoyingly I can't get past it from a couple of years ago. But the race is really enjoyable one to do it's a road race but it goes down a lot of smaller paths uh, around uh, St Albans countryside so it's a really relaxed enjoyable race to do if you just want to get out of the city and do something that's a little bit more enjoyable the, the tracks are really nice to run down um, they're not too thin so as long as you get in the right area for your the speed that you're running then it's a nice fast race when I did it it was actually during the time where they were doing stunted starts because of um, covid measures so i had no issues at all um maintaining my place uh, and there weren't loads of people in front of me but i think if you were running this race and you really were focused on a time i would definitely make sure you get further up the front because some of the uh paths that you run on can be quite thin so i can imagine there's a bit of a funnel if you're doing uh, this race and you're in the wrong point and you want to get past people so definitely get further to the front but i really enjoyed this race it was a really nice well managed affair also felt quite relaxed in comparison to a lot of other races it felt quite local uh, which i do i really like local f feeling races in comparison to those bigger races i do like bigger races sometimes but if i want if i'm going for a pb quite often i find that the ones where it's a more uh, relaxed affair where it's a few less people it i generally do better in those races um and i like the fact that you don't have to turn up really early for these smaller races as as you, you do for the bigger races where they ask you to come like an hour in, uh, before. So St. Albans 10K is a really good one to try and not too expensive either. So my third and final pick is not strictly a race. And I also have to come clean. It's a thing that I organise. It's called the Big End of Year Run. Every year on the morning of New Year's Eve in London, we set off from Marble Arch and we run through some of the, the parks and around the main sites of London on a super slow, easy, casual, turn up and run, chatty friendly social run we have a half marathon but there is a 10k pickup point within that and you can do a 10k that takes in hyde park you'll run past the house of parliament you run past down the mall past buckingham palace to wave at the king and uh you'll see horse guards parade another big sort of site in london you'll also go over westminster bridge see big ben all the way along get to see the millennium uh, london eye whatever that's called now over the millennium bridge st paul's the wonderful epic view of st paul's before running back along the embankment to finish in embankment gardens it's it's a great little jaunt around the sites of london on a very very special moment in the year it's a brilliant way to blow away the cobwebs of christmas and or you know the holiday season and also set yourself up to a you know early for a nice new year's eve or kick yourself into the new year having already ticked off a lovely run the group that we get wonderful it's you run at your own pace no one gets left behind it's super casual it's free to enter and it's called the big end of year run you can find more information about that on facebook or follow it over on instagram so that's it from us on our 10k picks i did mention at the start that most of us live in the midlands or the south so a lot of the races are sort of fitted around there um, but if you are watching this and you know of a really good race that's higher up than the Midlands or in the Midlands in the north, let us know because we're always keen to hear more about those races and we might even mention those in a future video so that we can make sure we're covering the whole of the UK when it comes to races and not just the areas that we live. Don't forget to like and subscribe, that really makes a difference and check the channel out for all the other videos we've got. You can also go into the caption below and check out the link to the, our podcast, our monthly podcast that comes out at the end of each month where we talk about various things from the latest kit to training and 
other stuff as it comes up. So uh, the latest episode of that you can find in the caption below. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you next time.